What a beautiful day it is. The sun is still out over there. 26 degrees in August. Yeah, well, of course it is. We're still in the same day then. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Alma, Missouri. Today, we've got to get the combine out, which I believe is over in this shed. I'm still finding my way. Oh, yeah, it's in that shed, I think. Let's just um, power walk. And we're going to have to test out these. Now, I'm still recording this one before the other episode has gone out live. So I'm not sure yet. It's still... Uh, still not public as i'm recording this so i don't know people's opinions on this whether if we're keeping these or getting rid of them but for now i think i'm gonna have to keep them and i'm gonna well it looks like that's set up already is that actually over the bin it looks it yeah we're gonna have to try and work this out what do we do what do we do with these do we do anything with them uh, i don't know oh i've entered it <clears throat> that's what she said anyway let's move on let's get the combine we need to get we're gonna take the Take the case out today. That's going to be our runner on the trailer. So we'll get set up. I'll head to the wheat field. And we'll start combining. So we're all set up then. And it looks like we're having a bit of a case day today. We've got the case tractor, case combine. Oh, well, let's rock. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So straw swath is enabled. This is going to be pretty good though. It's quite a size field. We're going to come back with the baler. We're going to test out the quick, quick baler. We've used it before, but um, it'd be quite nice to sort of give it a go on here. Corn's not quite ready. I'm not actually sure when that is ready. I don't think it's going to be too long. But we had to move the corn header out of the way because that was pretty much attached to this in the shed. So that's out of the way. But it's a uh, normal header on. Yeah, things are looking good. This is a beautiful map. And uh, yeah, it just works so well. Everything's so smooth on here. I've, I've been on a few maps when you first jump in and it's they're just a bit rough. But this... Yeah, beautiful map. I like this. So we're going to try and expand the fields as well. We want to try and get more fields. We want to try and get productions. If you've got any suggestions about what productions, I've not actually looked at any of them yet. I'm trying to hold off just to take in a bit of a peek. I'm trying to sort of, you know, be a bit of a surprise. We literally jumped into this on the first episode. I'd been on it for like two minutes before I hit record. So yeah, we're just trying to sort of hold back a little bit. Tatties. Well, you know what, actually? I don't, and I don't believe it is. What's that new crop? That's new crop, isn't it? Look how perfectly lined it is. It's either carrots, parsnips, or red beet. Hmm. We will check in a little bit. Place your bets. Leave it in the comments below what you think. Is that the beach here over there? You see, I've not actually gone and explored. The only bit of this map that I've actually seen is when I went... Well, I was tabbing through on the uh, first episode, and I... I jumped into a gator. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I got a gator. And it was, for some reason, the other end of the map. But uh, yeah, I jumped in that. I had to bring it through town. So I did have a bit of a, a, bit of a nosy. Did see a bakery. Now, I don't know if that's just a bakery that looks like a bakery, like decoration bakery, or if that is actually the bakery. Did see a pizza place as well. That's quite cool. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to do some exploring. Like I said, if there's any uh, productions on here that you know of, you maybe play this map and you think that, ah, give that one a go. Leave it in the comments below. Let me know. I would love to find out what we should try and aim for first. At the minute, these are the fields that we started with a new farmer. So I'm just trying to work my way through, get these done. And then we can start exploring. So let's uh, whiz round, get some of this done. So we're over here then pretty quickly with our first full trailer and um, I've got to work out how to do this. So I know I stood here and managed to get into one of these. Okay. Well that to me looks like it's over this spout. 
We've got a little motor on it, so we can move it. Oh, that's backwards. Well, that's over. How do you open that lid? Or does it open itself once you start tipping in? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we can't get up there. There's no way that, no way we're going to get up them ladders. Does it open itself? I'm, I'm very new. Be gentle with me because I'm new with these. <laughs> it's my first time. I have no idea. Never used these bins before. There's got to be... I mean, there's got to be a way to open it. Hasn't there? Oh, hold on. I see I see a cord. Do we put this on here? Do we, do we grab that? Is that decoration or does that actually do something? I don't know. Um, okay. Nope, jumping doesn't help. That's definitely the lever. It looks like it, but is that just decoration? Am I just literally looking at and it's actually just decoration? I'm not getting anything come up saying I, I can I can sell it or rename it. I don't, <laughs> don't want to do that. Okay. I, I'm gonna need to look into this. Okay, so I um I didn't have to pause my game and go and research on YouTube and look at another YouTuber's farm videos to find out how the heck you use these things. Didn't have to do that at all. I might have done. So apparently, no, that is just decoration from what I can tell. And that lid at the top doesn't open. Who'd have thought it? You would have thought that that would. Or if anything, once the grain starts going in, it would open. But nope, stays there. It just goes through the lid. So I'm glad I didn't spend too long kind of trying to get that handle to work. And um, so what we need to do then is we need to jump back in here. So yeah, that, that lid stays there. It just goes through it. Invisible. It's a bit of a shame. It would have been quite nice. Now we need to just figure out how we uh, how we move this thing. Oh, like that. So we need to move this thing out. And yeah, we'll sort of put it. We'll swing it around. Uh, I don't know. I can't see the minute, but we'll swing it around here. Okay, that's pretty good. So now we can get out. Does that need to be? Whoa, that's close. Does that need to be running? Out? I'm assuming it needs to be running. So we can jump in here now. The combine's waiting. The work is like, <clears throat> come on. <laughs> Sorry. Now, actually, can we use the green door? See, the green door's going to be better. There you go, green door. Oh, this is going to look proper. I feel like a real farmer now. So let's back up to this. Without trying to hit it. Okay, we get the trigger. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Uh, Tip. Oh, yeah. Can we uh, go and have a look, a look up here? Oh, 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 oh. You see what I mean? Why can't the lid open when it detects crop going in? I mean, I suppose they're not expecting someone to sort of zoom up here, you know? You just sort of tip it in. But anybody's going to want to check it's going in. I mean, that's pretty cool, though. And also, what else I've found out? Doing a little bit of research on YouTube. Apparently, these are multi-crop bins. Again, who would have thought it? I just thought it'd been a bin. Well, you're going to put one crop in there. You, you wouldn't necessarily mix the crops, but then this is farm sim. And apparently we can. Because if you go around the other side, which I might actually be able to show you sort of quickly. If we go around here, this one was lined up. Now, it's on the wrong bin. <clears throat> okay, scrap that then. I'm not going to show you because I'm going to have to set all that up. It's on the middle bin, but apparently... When you go under, you, you sort of have that set up like that. If we were on the right bin, I don't think this would actually come up. Did that, did that do something then, or was it just me? Was it my eyes? Okay, it, it did. You, you got a little trigger that says start filling. Look. Oh, so you can pick different crop. Gems. Now, I know I've got a gem mod. There's a production that does gems, but... You mean we can put gems in here? Strawberries? Obviously, everything we see on here is... Well, I'm assuming what that will take. Hey, dirt. Rye. That's a good one because uh, we can do rye on here. So, yeah, that's all you do is you put this preferably on the bin that's got the grain in. And you just get it out again. That's, that's pretty cool, that is. So, we'll leave that yellow one set up. And uh, does it tell me if we go up close to it? How full it is. Yeah, 2% full. Okay. So, I said in the last episode then about maybe we'll get rid of these and get something else. 
you know what i think i'm going to stick with these because that's quite cool I, I was a bit worried that it was going to be one crop you know we put wheat in one bin that's it that bin's done for it's wheat only would have made it a little bit tricky but since you can put multiple crops in the same bin not sure how that works but apparently it does yeah i think this is going to be good things are going pretty well then in the wheat field the worker is just finishing off doing the headlands the combine itself doesn't have much space and the trailer as well also i found out doesn't have much space so we are doing a lot of running about we've got a worker just doing the uh obviously the combine work just so i can do the running about because like i said the trailer is quite quite small but i thought we'd just come get this new baler well it looks like the work has done the hell is now is he, is he striping i do believe he's on striping mode it looks that way all right well we'll leave him to it then we'll see if we can try and get this now as i'm to look at this in the last episode we're on the smallest oh, where are you going worker we're on the smallest one well that isn't potentially small this baler's got quite big bales and i'm sure that the smallest one on here is ten thousand liter bales then i think the next one up which is 150 is 25 thousand liter bales and then the big one is 50 000. i do believe so we're going to go for the smallest ones because we don't need big whopper 50 000 liters we'll give this a go uh, it's got a bit of a wider pickup on it as we're fully aware so it does help going round, and we haven't got to stop it would have been worker do you see how far do you want to that is a wide turn it does look like it is going to be ten thousand. Oh no is it actually going to be more but well, we've gone over to ten thousand. oh it's eleven thousand. all right well that's not an issue and it flips them over i think that's going to be good i don't i don't want big whopper bales Eleven thousands. yep yeah, that's that's not bad so we will come back and tidy up these little bits that the the work is missed obviously it's on course place so it's set on uh round you know edges not sharp so it, it will leave little bits now i parked the trailer down here thinking oh well, the work is going to go around again but i forgot that the worker was doing three headlands and as you can see there's three swaths here so the work has done the three headlands work is now striping that's uh getting full already and that was just one tip might need to see about maybe upgrading to a, another size i don't want to go ridiculously big but you know i just want to go a little bit bigger now the worker must be getting close to getting full again what are we going to get off this field altogether I'd be nice to save this wheat actually because uh maybe able to look at getting chickens fairly soon yeah i think that could be quite good well we'll see how we go on then i'm just gonna go around do these headlands might have to move some of the bales out of the way because they're probably going to be in the worker's way but we'll try and keep them out of the way of the work if we can now we'll check back in just a little bit so i've just gone around got a few bales up well i'm just gonna go get a few bales up done the headlands and a couple of striping but the uh yeah the the combine harvester the work is getting a bit annoyed oh hello what's going on here lost all grip then the the work is getting a bit annoyed with me because um i've got to put these around the uh, the headland and i'll see the work is trying to turn around and it's uh, yeah it's getting in the workers way so we're just going to go around we're going to collect these up we should get quite a few on here And then i think we will uh, jump back in and uh, we'll do another time lapse and watching some of the worker uh, go through and carry on we need to come back and do these corners don't we we'll be a bit careful this trail i think it's because it's so long it just seems to well it's auto loaded so there should be no weight to it it seems to be pushing the tractor yeah we've got a nice amount already let's test 10. worker's doing quite a good job actually now the only because the corners that's that's my fault that is that's good well, let's say my fault i set it to smooth corners 
watching it as the workers stopped. I'm like, why have you stopped? Oh, it's full grain, that's why. All right, well, let's just grab these last few little bits and then we'll uh, go grab the trailer and unload. Yeah, not bad. We ought to test out our new shed as well. So we'll go and uh, park this here. We'll jump into this. We are going to have to go in there, tip this off again. Let's go see if we can get a little bit of this in then. It's, there's not really much room in here for the combine, so it's not going to get much further. But yeah, we'll go in there, tip a little bit in. Combine might just move forward just a little bit. And then it will stop again coming up. Oh, full grain tank. Let's go and get this back. We'll go tip this into the uh, the bin. And we'll come back and we'll empty them again. So I have just gone and tipped again and swapped my trailer out for this beautiful Flegel trailer. Look at this. So this is double the capacity of the last one, but this tractor is not going to be able to cope with this when it's full. So we're just sort of getting the combine going now. We're going to have to then drop this here and swap it over for maybe the big... You're going to have the big John Deere, I think. This should be able to go and run the baler. Yeah, it's uh, 40,000 litres in this one. It's about just over... Was it 21, 22 in the last one? So yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice trailer. A little bit more expensive than the last one, but yeah, we, we need to just sort of go up a little bit. Otherwise, uh, we're just running back and forth in the car. I was waiting so much for it. So we'll drop that there. We'll put this on the baler. Although it does look a bit weird since it's a John Deere colored baler, but hey ho, hey ho. Needs must. And we'll uh, we'll go carry on doing some baling. Let the combine get on a bit further. And then we'll come back and check in with it. Things are going pretty well on the field then. We've got a full trailer. It's going to come over here now and see. I believe we just... Did we just drive up to it? Or do we have to tip it? I think because it's also low, I think we have to tip it. So uh, let's go and uh, unload. Move across and down. And then I'm guessing around about here. Um, yep. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Let's go reset that. We'll get back in the field and see how we're going. Oh, straight through the building. The things are going well. What, what, what do you mean it's changed colour? It's always been green. The, the trailer's always been green. What are you on about? <laughs> now, we might have changed colour because... Um, well, I was just... The other one, I was just getting sick of it pushing me around the field. Every time I turn a corner, it's like, yeah, jackknives. I was like, I, I couldn't work out why. And then I kind of realized three axles. Triple axles on a trailer is going to always going to push the tracks around. So I swapped it for this one. Can't quite pick up as many bales. Uh, it's 24, this one. I think, was it 36 or 39, the other one? So yeah, I can't pick up as many. But the, this was half the price, which allowed me to go for this here. So I managed to get this from was it 115 to 145 so it's now 175 horses managed to put some uh, wider wheels on it and uh, some wheel weights so yeah that's pretty good so uh, yeah that's been uh, been tweaked a little bit money's dropping a little bit but yeah this is better twin axles makes it handle better all right we need to go back in here now starting us up i think this could be a, a fill up then 76%. I'm not sure if we're going to get all this in here. Work's doing pretty good, actually. We have got a lot of grain, but it's not going to be the best time to sell this. We're going to have to go in the crop here, Worker. You've not left me in a good place here. It's not going to be the best time to sell. I, I'm not sure when it is, actually. We'll have a quick look. We'll just get him set up so we can tip. There we go. Let's have a quick look. According to my stock checker, then, wheat, uh, what we've got so far, 44,000 litres. Best time's going to be in Jan. Where we can get 2,570 at the minute. It's only 1,700. So, uh, yeah. We will wait for Jan. We're going to put it in the uh, in the bins. We'll store it in there. We'll go take this in now. We've got a full load. 40,000 litres. We have a nice amount of bales as well, actually. We'll be able to see uh, what we get all together when we go to the, uh, the bale storage and we have a look in there. It'll tell us what we got. We'll also, while we're bypassing, we'll check on the uh, the bales. The, um, what they're called? Silage bales, that's the ones. 
We'll check on them and see. I don't think they're going to be much further ahead. Because we're still in the same in-game day as we were in the last episode. But they might have moved on a little bit. Are we, are we a couple of hours ahead or not? I'm, I've lost track, to be honest. Let's just jump out and have a quick look and see what, what you got. 8%. Oh, wow. They've moved on. Yeah, long, long way. Okay, so we'll go tip this in here. We'll go back to doing some bailing. Let's just see how this one goes. Oh, we've got to set this one to grain door as well. Put the help menu on. Tip backside. I'm not sure. Mm, I suppose grain door looks better. Will it still do it on the back? I just don't think it's all going to fit in. I think it will still go in. Uh, it might not look like it's it's going in, but I think it will all go in. Well, let's give it a go and see. Let's tip. Yeah, it still all goes in, even though it looks like it's going all over the place. Just a bit quicker than the green door. Well, I like that. See, it is quite a bit quicker than the green door, that isn't it? Wow. Oh, I remember these trailers. Yeah, they do go up quite, quite high. All right, so what have we got in there so far? Let's have a run around. Now, I've just realized I've left this running. I'm assuming they need to stay running for that to work. But if we jump into this... Well, you can see, I don't know if you can see at the bottom right, there's no fuel gauge or nothing. It doesn't say it's on electric. It looks like it's got a little motor. But there's no fuel gauge and it's not electric. So what the heck's it running on? It just shows a, a spanner for need fixing. So I'm not really sure exactly <laughs> what it's running on at the minute. Anyway, anyway what we got in here? Ooh, now it's full 84,000 litres. Not bad at all, that. Let's go get the remainder off the field then, because the work is probably uh, going to be moaning soon, saying, uh, I'm full again. Straight through the bin. Take this back then. We'll go in there, empty the worker. And we'll, uh, we'll get this job wrapped up. Just getting the last little bit out of the combine then. It's done a good job. All the bales are there ready. We've just got to go pick them up. Looking at the map, there's still quite a few there. Yeah, there's still quite a few there, in there? Look at that. Now, the combine is going back home. Well, I say going back home. It's going back to the uh, its starting point. We might just sort of steal it off the worker and just go tidy up them last little bit. So I'll go put this into the, uh, the grain bin. We'll come back. We'll tidy up them a uh, little bit that the worker's missed on the corners. And then we'll collect the remaining bales and see how many we've got all together. I think it's going to be... I don't know. Are we going to get a second trailer's worth? Maybe. We'll see in a minute. So we'll set this onto uh, not swath mode, just to chop mode. And we'll go straight through and just get all this up. Yeah. There we go. A little bit there. Don't get stuck in that. Where was the other little bit? I think it was it over this side. Yeah, here we go. Just these little bits. Just here. Straight through there, straight through there, and get that as well. Beautiful. There we go. I believe that is everything on this field. All done and dusted. So let's get this back to the yard. We'll go and tip this. See, I wonder if it can be tipped. Yeah, we'll be able to tip this straight from here into that auger. It's only 138 litres. It's not much at all. We'll go get it in, and then we'll come back and collect the remaining bales. Fingers crossed then, this should go in if we get it lined up. It'll probably be pretty quick because there's not much in it. There we go. Oh, no, a bit fitter forward. Get it right. There we go. Well, that was it. So the wheat harvest is done for this year. Now, when can we put wheat back in? So September, October, November, we could put some wheat in. We could put some barley in in September and October. But we can put some canola in now and September. So if we go through to next month, just so we're not doing everything in the same in-game day, if we do canola, that's a better price. So wheat, the best is sort of 2,139. Barley, 1,989. Canola, 3,828. Now we won't get quite as much as the others. I'm just thinking next month, put some of that in. And then it's going to be July next year. Corn's going to be ready in October. Yeah. I think that could be quite good. So if we go and put some canola back in that field, we'll sort the corn out. 
We could put some barley or wheat back in the cornfield. And I really want to know if the alfalfa is going to grow again. I'm assuming it is just going to be like grass, but I'm not 100% sure. We will find out. Yeah, this is definitely so much better now. Look at this. You can literally just whiz around here now. No more trailers trying to push the tracks around. Look at this, you see? It is that triple axle what was doing it. Let's go get the rest of these up. I was just having to think as well about the... Uh, we've got a planter and seeder. But I was thinking maybe... Now, we... Mm, you see, I know I've started with new farmer. Is that everything? I do believe we'll, uh, we'll put this back into transport mode. We'll take it over. We'll tip it into the uh, storage. And if we check the map... At the minute, it's still showing all them bales on the uh, on the field because it would have been auto-loaded. It doesn't really know that it's actually picked them up yet. It will do as soon as we tip him in It because then it will realize that, oh, it's move location. I think it would do if we got, you know, one of the actual proper bale collectors that actually scoops it up and tips it on the back. I think it would realize then that it's actually picked it up and it, you'd see them disappearing as we go. But because auto loaded, it doesn't really know yet until I take it over to here and actually dispense them in here, which we'll do. We'll uh, let's go tip that, move it across, drop it down. Whoop, and then nearly threw me myself there. There we go. And tip. Now let's just check the map. Absolutely spotless. Look at that. Not a single little bit of wheat left anywhere on there. Perfect, that is. So I think what we'll do is. Now, we could fast forward into the next month to see if these bales... I don't believe these bales are going to be ready. Let's just go part this up here for now. So, I was just thinking, if we... If we go and have a look on here, we've got a planter, which this is what we already own. That does all your normal, like, corn, sunflower, and all that kind of stuff. We can get 71,600 back for that if we trade it in. That's our cedar. Now that's only six meters, but again, does everything else. Wheat, barley, you know, rye, all that kind of stuff. And it takes fertilizer, obviously, and seed. So they're both brand new. So we could get rid of both of them. And then if we go on here, and obviously we go to the ones that I kind of, I know I normally use these ones. I mean, we could go for different ones, but this one, it's 12 meters. And it does both of them, like the plant and seed it together. It does everything. Now, we could go for the bigger ones, these ones. But unfortunately, these ones, I've just noticed, I, I was tempted. But it doesn't do the crops that we get on this map. So the rye and peas, they're not, they're not built for them. That's strange, isn't it? So if you look at the normal one, you can see the little icons at the bottom. We've got rye, peas, alfalfa. But look at that one. Well, there's no rye on there, there's no peas, and there's no alfalfa. So if we go for that, we're not going to be able to put some of the crops in. But unfortunately, we can't go for that one because it needs 300 horses. And I don't have a vehicle that's got 300. Or John Deere is the biggest one I think we've got. That's 280. So it's going to struggle with that one. So we're going to need to go for this one. Again, same with this. If I go for that one, it doesn't do some of the crops that this map gives us. So we would need to go for that. But look, 72,600. We could do everything, and it's double the size of what we've got. These ones that we've got here. Six meters. Nine. So, it, it's bigger, and it does everything. I think that could be a winner. There's a few things in it I think we could get rid of. I mean, this cultivator. I don't think we're going to really need it because, well, the new plants and cedar direct drills. So, we never really need to cultivate, and obviously it's better... If you don't cultivate, so it's brand new. So let's just sell that. Get a bit of money back for that. This, this is our cedar. Again, brand spanky new. Sell that for nearly a hundred grand. Mowers, uh, you see, I don't really want to just wipe everything clean that we've got. But I am, I'm tempted because if we can get some mowers that will swath as well. Get rid of this thing. So now we're, we're nearly a quarter million pound. I'm just thinking, yeah, if we can get ones that swath. Then, do we need the windrow? 
Actually, yeah, because if we're doing hay, we're going to need the windrow and tether. So, yeah, we can keep these things. But if we just get mowers at swath, at least then we can eliminate one. So, like, when we did the alfalfa in the first episode, we had to go around, cut it, then swath it, then bale it. But if we get, swap these out for ones that swath. Hmm. There's an idea. And I found out we got another door as well. I didn't realize that was a door. Got another door onto that. So, okay, let me go and get the, the new planter. And I will see how much money we've got left if we can afford the mowers. So I might have gone and just treated myself and gone and splashed out for the 300 horsepower one that I said that we couldn't pull. But that's only because I managed to find out that this, I could actually, it got one upgrade on it. So it's now a 6250R, which means it's now 300 horses. I don't know if you can see in the bottom corner. So yes, it's going to be maxed out with that. But it now allows us to put fertilizer in seed in it 18.2 meters and it does everything so it's not the like the top one which was a little bit cheaper didn't need quite as many horses but it didn't have ride peas and all the other stuff this has everything it was a little bit more expensive but because we got rid of the cultivator which i wasn't planning on and the gator i got rid of the gator as well because i don't really see a need for that there's anywhere we need to go we're going to be taking the tractor to deliver something so I don't really see the point of the gator. Now these I haven't really worked out what to do because yeah, it's going to be a bit a bit expensive. I think we've got everything back in here now. It's all tucked away, so we'll uh, we'll just go and shut doors. Close everything up now because uh, we're pretty much done with all that for this episode. What do we get in here? Thirty nine altogether. Well, I've literally been sat here now for about twenty minutes in in real life thinking about their mowers and what to do. I was thinking about, do I get a swather and actually, you know, go down that path? That's a lot of money though for that. And it wouldn't really help because it would just swath everything. You can't choose between like widespread and swath. And I thought about then swapping out the mowers, get a new front and back mowers that has the capability of being able to swath it and widespread it. That's what I'm kind of, I'm kind of edging to. I do like the mowers we've got. But it would be nice to have the option to be able to swath it if you want. If you're doing silage, it cuts out one process for you. And widespread it if you want to then ted it. Then you can windrow it. So, but I think for now we're going to leave it here. And um, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to wait and see. Because I want to see how much this is going to make us. I've got a feeling this is going to make us a nice amount of money. It's around about uh, 100, 110,000 for them two mowers. We're not going to get much back for them ones that we've got in the shed think about 25,000 for both of them so we'll see what this brings in but we're gonna have to obviously you know go to sleep and uh, wait for it to ferment 14 percent, not too bad if it brings in some nice money which i think it will do and we can buy them new mowers outright then i think we will i'll show you the ones i'm thinking of these are the ones i'm thinking of this is the back one now it's the kubota ones as you can still see this is the name on there but you can actually take the name off or you can put the name on if you want as well if we're gonna have a look we can put the name on that but we can uh, change the color as well you can have whatever color you want so uh, we can make it look a little bit john deere or we could just go completely pink that's not gonna happen so <laughs> we might make them john deere i've got a feeling that there's probably the john deere that we've got the 300 horses is going to be the only one that could actually take these i mean this alone on the back is 200 does it make a difference yeah it does make a difference if you've got them on the back so the little belts obviously will swath it as well then you can lift the belts up and just sort of widespread it so yeah I think we'll probably be going for them next time, but we'll see how much this is going to make us. But for now, though, we're going to leave this one here. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next episode.